to spend the next few minutes to talk about love indeed and in truth. Let's pray. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, that they'll be accepted in your sight. I pray, Lord, that you will guide and direct and that you'll give liberty. I pray against every obstruction to the proclamation of your word, even this hour. And I ask for help from on high. Come through, Lord, as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The passage that we have read, a very well-known portion of scripture. Many of us can even recite it as we learned it from primary school days. As we analyze the passage, I want to highlight the passage uh, talks a little bit about what love is not. We're talking about our theme for today is love indeed and in truth. So love is not a display of one's gifts. Tongues is not a display of one's um, love. Prophecy is not a display of one's love. No matter what giftings you are, it's not a display of love. Even if you have faith that can remove mountain and you give to the poor and have love, that's nothing. We also interact with the passage and we see love is not a display of one's sacrifice. Even if you were to surrender your body to the flames and have, do not have love, it's nothing. Even the supreme sacrifice, if not motivated by love, accomplishes nothing. Love, in the passage, pitfalls to avoid are highlighted. And I want to describe them as love in the negative. So it says love is not envy. Love does not boast, is not proud, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not easily angered, does not keep record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil. So Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says, this is what love is not. But then he goes on and he says, what then is love? He says, love is patient. And I refer to this as principles to practice. Love described in the positive. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love always protects. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. Love always perseveres. Six, and then he says, love never fails. Love in practice, kindness, patience, trust, hoping, and perseveres. As we look at our issues facing us at various levels in the church, in the community. There are some common hurdles to love in deed and in truth. In the context of marriage, we can identify some of those. Money problems, children problems, issues of sex, communication. Sometimes there are assumptions and just poor listening. And these apply not just in the context of marriage, most of them. But sometimes this COVID uh, challenge prevents us from loving indeed and, and truth. Sometimes there are in-laws issues, sometimes gossip, selfishness, disobedience, and spiritual disconnectedness. These are some of the hurdles to show love indeed an action in these days so again i reinforce this come on hurdles to love envy if we envy it's not going to help us to love if we are boastful it's not going to help us to love if we are proud if we are rude if we are self-seeking if we are easily angered those are going to inhibit love if we keep records of wrong my wife and i have been married for 35 years march 29th yeah, just recently, two weeks ago, we celebrated our 35th year of marriage. 
And I believe one of the things that has helped us over these many years is that we keep short accounts. We try to make sure that we don't go to bed with any unresolved issues. And sometimes if I fall asleep with my wife trying to resolve issues and when I wake up in the morning and just the way she calls me, anytime my wife calls me Donovan, I'm, I'm suspicious, something going on. You know, I'm certain that you know, um, you know, what's going on the way your wife talks to you. Some of you married many more years than that, right? I see you, yes, brother, I see you, tell her, yes. So I, I just, we just have to keep short accounts and, and forgive, delight not in evil. So here are some things that are hurdles um, to love. And as I interact with you for the next 15 minutes or so, I would like to talk with you about seven ways to show love. And the first one is to express gratitude. Have an attitude of gratitude in the context of church, in the context of home, in the context of work, in the context of society. Be grateful. Comparison is a thief of joy. And sometimes instead of being grateful for what we have, we are looking over the fence because over the grass over the fence seems greener. We don't remember that they're, play, they're, paying, you know, they're paying more water it. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. So in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of all that's going on, let's find those reasons to celebrate. Show gratitude instead of a sense of entitlement. Anybody ever feel that the church must take care of me? Anybody ever feel that my wife must wash my clothes? Anybody ever feel that my wife, my husband must provide food on the table? Sometimes the sense of entitlement robs us of genuine display of love. And instead of showing gratitude, there is a sense of entitlement. You are the father, you bring me into this world, so you must. We want to say, let's show gratitude. And even in these times, even the church is, is having uh, tough times. What are you grateful for today? J.F. Kennedy says we must find time to stop and thank the people who make a difference in our lives. Let's show some gratitude, even as we express love in deed and action and um, thoughts. So, in the midst of the lockdown, there's a way to be able to reach out to people and to express gratitude. And I want to ask you to be able to just do that today. Reach out to some person and show, tell them how much you appreciate them. It may be a telephone call. It may be, it may be a, a, a WhatsApp message. It may be somebody right at home express gratitude. Second principle I want to say to us, show some kindness. Show some kindness, random and deliberate acts of kindness. Look out for opportunities to help others. This time, lots of people going through lots of stuff. Almost every day, well, ever, ever so often we're hearing about persons who have lost loved ones. Sometimes we may just need to do some kind words. Speak the truth in love. Sometimes we want to speak the truth, but we don't remember the part that's set in love. And we just tell them a piece of our mind. And sometimes it can be rough. Let's speak the truth in love. Let's be kind to one another in this rough time. Lots of people going through lots of difficulties right now. Lots of jobs, all kinds of adjustments we're making. Before you spit out those words, taste them. Yes. Some words can be so harsh. Some church people words can be so harsh. We talk to the young people them and label them all kinds of ways. We label the older people all kinds of ways. Before you spit out those words, taste them. So speak life over some people. Let's call and be an encouragement to them. Here is a blessing. 
We can just declare over somebody right now, probably somebody nearby you, just declare a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So be kind. Here is a verse of the proverb that speaks a little bit about kindness. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to God. And he will reward them for what they have done. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to God. Ever thought about that? That as we, are, as we show kindness to the less fortunate in society, we are doing it as unto the Lord. But when we show kindness to the poor, we are lending to God. Who are three people you would lend money to? Lend to God by giving to the poor. Third lesson is, third uh, way to show love in deed and truth is to take responsibility for your life and stop blaming others. You control your thoughts and actions and thus control your life. Other people's faith and circumstances may impact your life, but you have a final say as to how your life is lived. And I want to encourage us, even in this difficult time, to take responsibility for our lives. Stop blaming others. Control what we can. Many times we blame others for things that happen. There's always somebody is the woman you give me who gave who led me into this to up sin. Or the woman will pass it on to the serpent. Yes, yeah, sometimes we pass the book, but let's take responsibilities for our own life. As we go through this time, all of us are going through tough times. And there are three zones that we, that we, can, that we go through. We are in the fear zone, we are in the stabilizing zone, or we are in the growth zone. And I want to challenge us to move from the fear zone where we are blaming others, where we are worrying and wondering and all kinds of difficult things taking place in the fear zone. Go to the, to the stabilizing zone where we, can, where we can do some deep breathing exercises, where we can begin to calm down, when we can re restrict the panic and, and, and all those kinds of stuff. But more than that, I want to ask us to get to the growth zone. Post-traumatic stress disorder we have all heard about. But post-traumatic stress, post-traumatic growth, we can also, we have been hearing about and we can practice. So in these difficult times, take responsibility for your own life. There are some things that you have control over and there are some things that you don't have control over. Your attitude, your spending, your behavior, your time. You don't have control. You have control over those. You don't have control over God. Others' attitude, not over corona crisis. Take control of your, of your thinking. It controls your life. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The way you think affects the way you feel, affects the way you behave. And then we want to say to you, practice healthy conflict resolution as you love in deed and truth. Practice healthy resol conflict resolution. And here is our little acrostic called the task. And I'm giving you four things there on the board now. Talk to the person directly rather than about the person. Hello. Anybody know some, how that works sometimes? Yes, we have a problem with a church brother or a church sister. Instead of facing it, we go and tell someone, facing the person, we go and tell somebody else. And sometimes, yeah. All right, the A is ask questions rather than make statements of judgment. When we ask questions, we say we want to learn. When we make the statements, it's like we are being dogmatic. Seek clarifications rather than make assumptions. Yes, these are some principles that we can practice.
to be able to help us as we navigate these rough seas, as we show love in deed and in truth. And the key is kneel in prayer, name them before God. Now we want to be careful here now because sometimes we carry people's story to the cup to the prayer gathering instead of talking to them and we say, pray for such and such. We have she having this problem or she having and we take that. There are some there's a place for us to kneel in prayer in quietness as we seek to help with resolving conflicts. Now, in the church and in the community and in homes, families, there are tendencies for conflict. And what we are finding is that sometimes during this lockdown time, we are there rubbing shoulders more, we're seeing each other more. And, and sometimes our love tank gets empty and our conflict, um, conflict increases. So here are some, cues, some clues, some strategies to help with conflict resolution. Attack the problem, not the person. Yes, speak to the problem. Do not attack the person. Avoid generalizations. Yes, it's not every time you're always, but rather right now, I feel that deal with the, the specific. It's not every time are you always, but deal with the specific. Yes, man. You always leave the, the, the sink dirty. You always, no, man. Let's do it right now. Um, the sink is dirty and I'm asking you to clean it up. Use I statement. I am upset and annoyed when I see the sink dirty. Work with our children. Work with each other to be able to deal with those things that are going to demonstrate genuine care and concern without attacking. Use I statements. I statements are less threatening. You statements tend to be condemnatory. Agree to disagree. Yeah. Agree to disagree. And we don't have to. We have got to learn to, dis to disagree in an agreeable manner. Not because there are disagreements that we're going to have start the next world war. Then go for the win-win. As couples, as parents and children, as church members, as co-workers, let's go for the win-win. Nobody wants to feel as if they are doormats. They want to feel that they are respected, they are valued, they are appreciated, they are honored, that they have something in this too. So, win-win. Just don't trample down people and then commit to forgive. Wow, that's a big one. How many times should I forgive? 70 times seven? Jesus was just saying plenty, plenty, plenty. Should I forgive even if the person does not ask forgiveness? Wow. Big one. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they have done. And sometimes we have to pray, Father, forgive them, even though they know what they have done. And that, that they're not sorry at all. Father, forgive them. Unforgiveness destroys us, destroys the vessel in which it is carried. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die, somebody says. So it, as we seek to love in deed and in truth, let's keep short accounts as couples, let's keep short accounts as church people. Let's cry out, Father, forgive them. And we have to forgive them too. Nelson Mandela said, oh, forgiveness is the key to freedom. Some of us feel trapped. Some of us have issues with our parents. Sometimes our parents are even dead and gone and we still have issues. I want to encourage you to let it go. Let it, yes, it is possible to forgive the person who has passed. Let it go. Here Nelson Mandela he says, as I walked out the door toward my freedom, I knew that if I did not leave all the anger, hatred, and bitterness behind, that I would still be in prison. Anybody in prison of unforgiveness? Anybody in chains because of anger and bitterness? Anybody have up any church people? And right now you can't go to church and say, I'm glad because you know, I see that sister face or that brother face. Yes. 
Let's get rid of it. Unforgiveness destroys the person who carries it around. Hey, remember, there's a difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. Forgiveness involves one person. Who is that person? The carrier of the unforgiveness. Me, you, whoever. But reconciliation involves at least two persons. Say, so yes, we're going to walk hand in hand again. And then forgiveness does not necessarily mean trust. Yeah, not because you forgive the person that you're going to trust her with your valuables again. You're going to trust her again. Not because you forgive the church brother you're going to trust. Over time, you may be able to do. Trust is easily destroyed, but hard to be rebuilt. So I want to ask you, work on that forgiveness element. In this time, where we have time to introspect, to look within our own lives, Let's find out, is there anybody I need to forgive? Now, so forgive, let it go, let it go. And ask ourselves, how do we show love? How do we show love in these difficult times? And many times we show love in the ways in which we receive love. So we want to show love the way we experience love. So... And sometimes because you want quality time, then you give quality time when the person just wants acts of kindness. I'm going to share with you the five love languages, which I think um, some of you know already, but this is just a refresher, just to be able to remind us how to show love in these times. Words of affirmation, maybe what somebody needs. The other person may need... Quality time. I'm going to put up all of them on the screen right now. Some people may, may receive love as visual symbols. They want to receive gifts. Others may be acts of service. Others may just need a physical touch, physical contact. And yes, that's limited right now, but there's a place for that still. So, how can you show love? Sometimes, love is spelled T-I-M-E. I just want time with my spouse. He's always so busy. Yes, man. I just want to just be in his presence or her presence. She's also always so busy. Since the children have come along, I am not priority anymore. I just hungry for a little time. Sometimes it's just acts of service. Iron the clothes, cook the food. And sometimes the husbands get in the kitchen and the wives just appreciate it so much even to do the little wash up afterwards, if that's all we can do. But we can do more than that on a Sunday afternoon like this when it's lockdown time. So how can you show love to your family, to your friends, to your church people? I'd like to suggest that it is useful to understand how they experience love as we seek to show love. Words of affirmation. Everybody can do some words of affirmation. And you don't know what your church brother, your church sister are going through. You don't even know what your own children are going through. And I say to us, criticize less. Affirm more. Find reasons that speak positively over their lives. I remember when our children were young, I would speak a vision of what I want to see in their lives. I, and, and when there were inconsistencies, I would point that out. But word, positive words encourage the, the, what you want to, to develop. So how about that special one, someone in your life? How can you show the person that you love? How about just showing love to the person out there, church member? Find a way to be able to just show love. So here are the five love languages that we know, many of us know uh, very well. I want to say to us, as we show love, sometimes we can just lighten up. 
It doesn't have to be so tight and hard. It doesn't have to be so drastic and sometimes bordering on rude, even when we are reprimanding. We can show love. I look back in my journey of working with young people, and I believe one of the greatest honors I've had from working with um, one of my campers is somebody coming to me and for having done, having done something wrong and was being reprimanded. And he said, he looks forward to coming to me because in those moments of reprimand, he also feels love. Isn't that great? So sometimes we have to just lighten it up, lighten it up, man. What is the funniest thing that happened to you? In this lockdown weekend, talk, call up somebody and remind them about those good old days. Share with family about those good old, day, old days. Find reasons to laugh and to celebrate. Laughter is still the best medicine. So as we love indeed and truth, we don't have to be so angry and upset. We can come across as caring, as wanting to settle an issue without being angry, upset. A joyful heart makes a cheerful face. A merry heart does it good like medicine. Yes, just lighten up. Even when we're reprimanding, we can lighten up and show love. Bless someone with a smile. How many of us know that the eyes can smile? So even under the mask, we can see those eyes smiling. So let's smile say, but you are at home now with people around. I'm certain that you're not wearing mask at home. Or most of us not wearing mask at home. But smiling makes us attractive. Smiling changes our mood. Smiling is contagious. Smiling relieves stress, boosts your immune system, and lowers your blood pressure. Smiling lifts the face and makes you look younger. Smiling helps you stay positive. Yes, brother, smile. You might just get long, younger by the time the lockdown is over. If you are in Jamaica, that is. Yeah, stop stressing out so much. This too will pass. The, 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 the joy of tomorrow is that which you worry about today. The joke of tomorrow is the worry of today. So this too will pass. Remember, God is not going to give you more than what he's prepared to help you bear. If he takes you to the mountain, he will take you through. And now we're getting into spirit, develop your spiritual life. The more you develop spiritually, the more you reflect Jesus and the more you're able to show love to those. This is a critical step to powerful living. Develop your spiritual life gives your life meaning and purpose. This is number seven that we're looking at. And research shows that having strong religious convictions lead to greater happiness. So even as we develop our spiritual life, we become happier. Now, I want to take you to six things as we develop our spiritual lives. I want to say, understand the times and know what we ought to do. In these days, of corona crisis, let's understand the times and know what we ought to do. This is a verse of scripture that has led me in ministry over many years. Even with my work in the area of suicide prevention, that we have got to understand the times. What is going on? What is on God's agenda? What is the Lord doing? What does he want us to do even as he has caused this great leveler around the world? And we have got to do, know what we ought to do. So we have to press in and seek God in these times. God, what's going on? Reveal your purpose, oh God. Help us to understand what's going on. I think about this story with the jailer, uh, with Paul and Silas in prison. But even in prison, they were celebrating. They were praising God. They were rejoicing. And out of that, people came to the Lord. So the point I'm making here is that even... It is time to celebrate even in the face of the tough times. Celebration even in the corona crisis. Yes, the real test of our commitment to God is that how high we jump when things are going well, but how firm we stand when we touch ground. 
Let's find reason to celebrate, celebrate each other, celebrate the fact that even though it's lockdown time, we can still come to you by Zoom. Many of us didn't even know Zoom before, but then we're doing so many things for this tool. So let's find reasons to celebrate. This is called sacrifice of praise. Many of us have an if praise, you know. If, if, I, if that happens, then I can celebrate. If the Lord blesses me, if, my, if, if he gets well, I will celebrate. If that, I will celebrate. But few of us have the even though celebration. Even though, even though, even though, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Not in those circumstances, not in the tough times. But let's celebrate. Even the tough times. Let's have that even though, even though, yet I will celebrate. Number three, as we talk about spiritual development, help even those who hurt you. <laughs> wow. It is called heaping coal of fire on the person's head. But in the passage in Acts chapter 16, where Paul and Silas in prison, and the very people who beat him and, 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 over, and were in oversight while they were being placed in prison and so on. Paul was kind to him when he was about to kill himself. When he pulled that sword, Paul said, do yourself no harm. Help even those who hurt you. Yes. And I ask you, pray for them, yes. But there may be some things that you can do to just reach out and show kindness. That's kindness only possible because of Jesus. See opportunities to represent Christ, even in the most difficult times. See opportunities in the hurt and the pain and the challenges to be a representative of Christ. Paul was in prison. Paul was trapped. He was restricted, not even just for the weekend. He was placed in prison. But he saw an opportunity to, re to represent Christ. In the face of the difficulties and challenges, let's see opportunities to show love in deed and in truth. Number six, may you and your whole household surrender to faith in Christ. The portion of scripture we have read, we recognize that in the time of crisis, the jailer says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Remember that when people are going through difficulties, they are most open for, 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 super, for divine intervention. Jesus got a chance, um, Paul got a chance to answer the all important question, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your whole, you and your household. And then the blue section here says, he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God he and his whole household. In the midst of the crisis, in the midst of what's going on, let's find out what are the opportunities to represent Christ. I told you earlier that COVID-19 started just over a year ago. We started doing these webinars. We just decided, oh, we can do something during the first lockdown. And for, except for two weeks in, Christmas, in the Christmas season and one and this week, we have been at it every week and we have gone 102 webinars. Go to our website and look at them, watch them. Um, all kinds of issues, all kinds of helpful stuff there. Preparation for marriage, single and loving it. When suicide comes to church, school, home, resilience. But we have had an opportunity to be able to reach out, even in the face of the challenges. Dig deep and find out, God, what are the opportunities to be able to serve in deed and action to show love in these times? And I say, may you and your whole household move to a, well, surrender to faith in Christ. In these tough times, it is time to dig deep. It is in the context of crisis that the jailer and his whole household came to faith in Christ. I ask you, my brothers and my sisters, reach out to those who are in need. Because you may be able to help the person in need and his whole household come to faith in Christ. Understand the times and respond as God leads. <clears throat>
as you seek to love in deed and in truth, I want to ask you to be truthful personally. So many times it is just so distressing where people are having an outward show and we think that they are such mighty men of God and mighty women of God and the outward show is so large but the spirit is perishing. Show love in deed and truth by being honest before God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength and with all your mind. Let's not just do it because it is a thing to do. Not just do it because we are church leaders. Let's not just do it because the family expects it. Not just do it because that's what I have done from a child. But may we dig deep and in truth and deed represent Christ in a way that brings glory to his name. Go to God daily in prayer. Read his word. Obey what the word says. Worship with others. Tell someone what God is doing in your life. Let the Holy Spirit direct your life. Growth in these times. Love the Lord. Love the Lord some more in these times. When you love, you spend time. When you love, you want to spend time. So spend time with the Lord. And love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. Even that repulsive neighbor. Even that neighbor who told a lie on you. Even that neighbor whose dog disturbing you so much. Love your neighbor as yourself. My brothers and sisters, I ask you to grow more to be like Jesus in these times. The more we are like Jesus, the more we are able to love in deed and in truth. Let's go for growth. Prayer. Read the word. Obey. Worship. Witness for him and be led by the Holy Spirit. We're going to go for prayer right now. I want to pray for somebody who is saying, God, I need your help. To love in deed and in truth. Not just in, 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 in word, not just outward, but in deed and truth. I want to also ask you to dig deep. I don't know if, there, if you are a Christian, I don't know where you are in your relationship with God, but now is a good time to surrender to him as you seek to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Love the Lord by first asking him to come into your life and to give you the strength and to give you the capacity to love the way he wants you to love. If you're here and you do not yet know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'd like to pray a prayer with you and ask you to pray that prayer as your very own. Same kind of prayer I prayed when I was 11 years old, asking Jesus to come into my life. You want to love. And there are some people you find hard to love. Ask Jesus to give you the capacity to love. Let's pray. If you're making that commitment to the Lord or a recommitment, I ask you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins and receive me as your child. I repent of every evil I've done. And I now make you Lord of my life. Give me the strength to live for you in this world of evil. Help me, God, to be faithful to you to the very end. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters today. I pray, Lord, for an outpouring of your love. I pray, Lord, that you'll increase their capacity to love, to receive love, and to give love. I pray for those who need to forgive pour in the oil and wine of healing upon bruised emotions. I pray strength from on high. I ask God that you'll just minister right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that some stones will be rolled away from some lives. I pray God that you'll just pour in, pour in, pour in. I pray for those who are going through the middle of their story with so much hurt and so much pain. I pray Lord that they'll offer sacrifice of praise and they'll say even though, even though yet I will praise you. Bless God. Bless 
Galilee Gospel Hall again. Bless the leaders, bless the members, bless everybody on the forum tonight, today as we say thanks. Thanks, God, for the opportunity to represent you in this manner. Pray that something that I have said will challenge and lead people to further commitment to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Everyone just say